<laughs> I was doing a consult with the brother and he gave me a really good, uh, I told him too, in the middle of the conversation, I was like, hold on, I got to write this down. This is a good title. And uh, <clears throat> is your awakening making you bipolar? What do I mean by that? It is a fine line, by the way, of you can say uh, mental, mental illness and uh, awakening. Mm. This depersonalization that can happen, and it usually happens when, like, if we did some drugs we shouldn't have, or too much plant medicine, or we were doing too much energy work, this kundalini work, you know, we're, we're, we're going to try to force awakening. I'm going to force it. I got to wake my kundalini up, and then that's going to that's gonna open all my chakras, and then the energy is going to flow out of the top of my crown chakra, and uh, I'm going to be awake. See, the mind has this, these concepts like that it can it can manifest and make an awakening <laughs> like it like it does with everything else. I want to be a lawyer. I go to school. I'd be a lawyer. I want awakening. I'm going to do this practice, you know, arduously and then I'm going to awaken and then you can get in trouble, though. That's the thing. So sometimes these uh, practices or drugs or it could just be karma that it happens. Um, there's a story about Papa G. He said he remembered in uh, one of his la last lives that um, he went into a samadhi state and I think he was in school or college and he couldn't move. It was like sleep paralysis, but he was, he was still awake, but he couldn't, he couldn't uh, move anything. And he stayed like that, stayed like that for too long. That was the problem. So then they checked, because when you're in deep samadhi, your breathing stops, your heart stops, you know, everything stops. So the, they pronounced him dead. <laughs> put him into a coffin, put him under the ground, but he's still awake, you know. Then he had that experience again in his last life, but then he came out of it quicker. So then they didn't have to do that again. What's the point? So, oh, the point. Like, it can spontaneously happen too, this um, uh, just jolt of, you can say, cosmic energy that just, you know, you're just walking down the street and all of a sudden, bam, you're like, whoa. You know, so we, we don't know, we don't know the karmic timing for this stuff. But that's another point that I think I made in another video. You can't do anything to make this happen. This stuff happens when it happens. So you relax, you do your spiritual sadhana, you keep looking, bringing your attention inside. And forget about the, the, the whole concept around special effects and awakening. And did I awaken and all that stuff. Just forget about it. Let the process do, do its thing. Because that's what it's going to do anyway. Otherwise, you're going to look like one of the non-dual people who, in their imagination, they're imagining that they're awake. But they're not. Imagination is very strong. You, you, you can even imagine yourself in a, some kind of blissful, ecstatic state. I, I've seen that in Gokarna in India. It was, it was like, scary. Because <clears throat> his face was so contorted. It was just fake. That's why. It wasn't an, or, an organic bliss. Like, you can see a picture of uh, Sri Deyamada somewhere. That was real. Like, that's like, yeah. But this guy was like faking it. <sighs> He's doing all these silly things, you know? And then to make it worse, there were people like saying, wow, he's in ecstasy. I'm like, oh God, I gotta get out of here, man. I'm like, what's the world coming to? You know, what planet am I on? God, why'd you put me here? <laughs> so imagination can impersonate an awakening a, a lot but you can always know via vibration or energy if you're in touch with your own subtle vibration and energy you can read and see where somebody's at you can just see if they're doing some laughing yoga exercise and then pretending to be in bliss you can catch that you can catch when somebody's you know just putting on some fake spiritual act you can catch it all right no we're talking about bipolar awakening. I just think it's funny. Um, because the guy was having trouble. One moment, he'd be like, oh man, like, why do I even play in these thoughts? They're just thoughts and they pass. And, and they're, not, they're, not, they're not real in the sense that they don't have any permanent reality behind them when, when they tell me whatever they're telling me. Like, He's like, it just doesn't matter. Why am I, you know, like everything's cool. Like right now, it's like everything's cool. The show's running itself. Life is cool. Even if I don't feel good, even if I have some tension, like what difference does it make? It's going to pass. It's cool. 
Oh, I don't, my peace level went down. Oh, so what? See, he, he that scene was there. Okay, next moment. Just out of the blue. Like, boom, back in mind. Thought, oh man, you're not, you're not going to get, the, maybe you're just imagining this whole <clears throat> awakening thing. You're not, it's not even um, actual. Maybe you're just deeply stuck in mind and ego. Maybe this world, this is a, maybe this is just hell. <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit because um, I want to make the point. How can you go from being, uh, how can you have this bipolar awakening? Full on, like, my, my scene's very clear to like, oh man, uh, uh, I'm in trouble. How does that happen? Why, why does that happen? Are you doing something wrong? Do you need to like do your self inquiry practice more diligently or meditate more or <clears throat> you need to go to a retreat? Like what's wrong? Is there anything wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. That's my message. There's nothing wrong. This is part of the process, the evolutionary process. It's not a one and you're done thing. The consciousness, the lower self, the body, mind, self, it doesn't get absorbed like that. Okay, the, you can say that you, your universal self, your universal energy starts to wake up. The consciousness starts to wake up. The lower self, it's like a black hole. <clears throat> you know, the black hole pulls everything into it. Once, once your universal self starts to wake up, it starts to pull this, this lower self into it. It starts to get absorbed. But don't let your imagination tell you what that looks like. It doesn't mean any, it's not a big deal. It's so natural. It's not because the mind will say, whoa, oh, I'm gonna, you know, it just whatever it thinks, it's wrong. I'm just, I gotta use words to try to articulate this. And so what, what to do? <clears throat> it's fine. Lower self starts to get, uh, it's another word, dissolved. Oh no, what do you mean? I'm gonna dissolve. Don't give any pictures to what I'm saying. <laughs> the, lower, <laughs> the lower self starts to get, uh, eaten up no okay <laughs> the lower self starts to merge with the higher self How, how's that merge you see i knew i'd find a word that's less uh, invasive it starts to get merged with the higher self but not all at once it's like kind of in the black hole getting black hole is the universal self by the way it's a good black hole positive black hole and but the, then the lower it's like but no i don't i don't like want to go in there yet like so maybe it's legs are in there but it's still like you know it still wants to play and act out its <clears throat> maybe defects of character have fun with its instincts etc which you can still do by the way see again the mind will say oh what do i just sit here like a statue all day no it's just the mind is stupid it it thinks it says like if i get absorbed then i don't exist anymore and i can't enjoy life and i become some kind of buddha robot and it's just not like that you enjoy everything the same even more because you're not attached to it, but you don't overindulge in this stuff anymore because you've organically seen that's not where it's at. You're not depriving yourself. It's not like something really wants to go do something, but but you're like, no, but I'm spiritual now. No, you've already done it and you see through it and you have better things to do. That's all. That's why you don't do it. So there's this kind of tug of war for a little while, this this fight. Why, you know, Read the Bhagavad Gita. It's, a, it's an exp explanation of both collective level and individual level, this play of evolution, of spiritual evolution. So you, it's normal. That's my point. That's what I want to drive home. It's normal. It's going to be like that. Muji uses an example, the pendulum, I think. Yeah, you swing in, everything's good. You swing out, oh, this sucks. Oh, I'm back in. Oh, no, I'm so You get to where you're not, you're not attached to either one because they're still both experiences. It's not like when you're in a more blissful state that then you're yourself. But then when, you're, when, you're, when that bliss starts to decrease, that then you're less of yourself. It's not like that. You start to realize that either one, it's still an experience. And you're not, you're not doing something wrong when you're not in that nice, joyful state. And you're not so-called doing something right when you're in the blissful state. You see, you drop all these concepts and judgments. 
this is life plane, your life. It's expressing itself and evolving through the seeming individual form. Let it, let it do what it does. Don't get attached to the peace and don't hate the non-peace. And don't, don't sweat it <clears throat> when you go through this back and forth thing uh, for a bit. And don't put a time limit on it, like when it should end. It's normal, it's a healthy thing, it's good that it's happening. What do you think, that happens to every, most people don't even, they're, they're, they're so stuck in ego and karma and human level, they don't even, like we couldn't have this conversation on any level. So that tells you, you're, you're, you're in one of the higher levels of evolution and now it's just a matter of time for this karma to burn off, the lower self to get more and more absorbed. Remember though, never gets totally absorbed, okay? Still, because you, you have to retain some individual sense of a self to enjoy the universal self. There needs to be some contrast, some perspective. That's why, like you don't evaporate and dissolve, but what happens is the pendulum swing isn't like this. See, it gets more like this, and then more like this, and then you're, you see, you're good. But don't wait for it. Don't be like, when's it gonna just get like this? No, you just, you just accept, like this is, this is how it is. You be good with that, okay? That's my message. Let me know if you have any questions. I do consults if you're interested. I have a semen retention channel called Beyond the Alchemy. I have a channel for specifically for women called Divine Femininity. Those links are on my uh, YouTube uh, home channel page. All right, have a good day.